you're in Nevada and you've got to play the game because our number one business here happens to be casinos. You are totally addicted. No. Joel's challenged me to a bet. We get to spend whatever money we have on the dinner. We'll see if I'm going to be eating anything for dinner tonight. We're Becca and Joel. We're two Canadians living in our van, Popple, and today we find ourselves tempted by the playful wonders of Las Vegas. And I may or may not have been a little too captivated with the game. After spending a couple of weeks in the beautiful Baja beaches, it was time for us to make our way back up to Canada. Fans off. Back is closed. Skylights down. The question is, am I ready to give up the trip? We are not ready. We actually forgot our bungee cords, which are very essential to the well-being of our dwarves back here. Now we're ready to go. So, why not a pit stop where we can make some quick change, you know? Enough to fill up our gas tanks, right? Or, uh, at least, so I thought. Babe, when in Vegas, you play like the Vegas. Gotta do a slot. Are you serious? have the chance of winning like $600,000. American. That would be nice. We made it to Vegas, baby. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Try the Dunkin' Donuts, America. That's like your equivalent of the Tim Hortons. That's closed. Okay. Dunkin' Donuts, you failed us. We closed at seven in the morning. That's why we're going back to Canada, because you can trust the Tams. As you may have guessed by now, this story isn't about big money but rather about how I got enticed into them gambling ways. So well, we're here in Las Vegas and I'm gonna use a slot machine for the very first time. Man, if I win, I'll be addicted. <laughs> Not how things work, babe, but yeah. Okay, I'm a little nervous here. Yes, you'll be fine. Although I really think we're gonna win millions and I'm already thinking about like what we are potentially gonna spend it on. Like, I'm picturing the house we're gonna build. All right, let's go. As two country uh -huh. born Canadians, you better bet that our mamas warned us. So I guess we need money. Huh? are gonna work to never get sucked into the gambling life but since we found ourselves driving through las vegas we just had to give it a go i really think we could win quite big here what a waste of money okay sir it's not 40 bucks i made money i'm done we gotta play keep playing it's unbelievable okay. i'll play Don't we you feel over doubled our money Back up to 40. We cash out now or do we keep going? I think we gotta keep going. Oh my gosh. We will cash out, but we could have won $8,000. Probably. Money, money, money! There we go. That was the biggest winners. I think we gotta try another slot. $12 that we made, we try another machine because it's gonna be like, you're brand new. Hey, brand new person. And then it will give us more money. And we just keep making the 50s. And when you make up to the 50s and you grab the money in the year, you, that's how you make money. You are totally addicted. No, I'm serious. No, you were addicted. Yeah. It caught, it I'm caught actually, you. I'm actually the bug, serious about that. The bug of gambling has caught you. This is not good. It's this is, this is, no, this is dangerous, okay? <laughs> this is what I was afraid of. That you would get addicted, and then... Like, I'm pretty sure, actually, we should just go try another machine. You're joking, right? I'm not. Like, I actually think we could play another machine with the $12 that we made. That's that's the classic. That's the classic. Dollars. Someone wins a million dollars in a night and then respends yeah. it all. Did you see how it worked? It went up to the 50 and then it was like, bing, you made $50, oh my gosh. And then it went down again. And it take them. So you play the game only until you win, and then you quickly cash out instead of saying, oh, but I might make an extra $200. This is the rationalization of an addict. But we made money, so that's cool. Made money, my very first time playing a slot machine. Okay, there was a little bit of that that was kind of fun. Oh, only a little bit? You wanted to cash out as soon as you made the first dollar. Exactly, and we would have made more money. You're like, hit it once, and you're like, that's it. I was like, babe, that's not how you play. Oh, if only I had listened to the much wiser Joel, but as it goes, I was blinded by our good luck. Okay, now that I've had that experience, I totally get why people come to Vegas to play. And I still think that we could make a lot more money if Joel would just let me. I don't think so. So I figured if we leave Las Vegas with more cash than we came in with, 
That's a win. We had 20 and now look, we have $12 more. And I'm trying to convince Joel that we need to go spend that $12 to either lose it or double it. You actually just want to spend the rest of the money we won? Babe. Yeah. Okay, how about we split our losses? I keep my money. You go and spend your half of the winnings and we see who ends up with more. And you're just not going to spend yours at all? No. I'm going to use mine towards something yummy. And then for supper we can spend our money on our earnings. Okay. I have very good luck first time playing. Joel's challenged me to a bet. We get to spend whatever money we have on dinner. So we're splitting the prize pot of the 30 some dollars that we won. I'm taking half of it. I'm going to play it. And then he's going to, I guess, not spend his. We'll, we'll see if I'm going to be eating anything for dinner tonight. I just lost all my dinner money, so I will not be eating supper. And uh, Joel will be having his wonderful takeout, whatever that is. Don't waste your money, kids. It's a hole, a sinkhole. Also, tends to happen. That lady was very rude. Whether or not my luck was skewed by the rude lady, reality was setting in. I had lost the bet to Joel and would now have to pay for my wayward ways with an empty belly. Upon reflecting on our experience of gambling in Nevada, I have come to realize that they suck you in the first game that you play. Let's actually go down this conspiracy rabbit hole. They have a camera that connects each of these slots together so they know if you've played a slot before. And then they'll give you a little boost of money so you feel like you've won and then you get hooked and you want to do it and then they take all your money. You know, it's just Did absolutely you know not worth it. It's not worth playing to get, it's not worth gambling. Don't gamble because now I'm going to starve tonight because I, I lost all my money. I don't like to lose. I mean, who does? But this defeat smarted more than usual because not only was Joel going to enjoy a scrumptious feast, he had somehow resisted the temptation that I had so readily been taken with. Was he somehow immune to gambling? Oh, the irony, as he was the one so afraid of addiction in the first place. I was eager to put the land of temptation behind us and to find our way back to Canada. But first, Joel had a feast to enjoy. I've come to the place where Joel is going to claim his dinner. His $15 worth of dinner. How many french fries do you get for five bucks? At this place, probably 10. I really think Joel should just let up and let me get some food. Because this is like a world famous burger joint. Let's see what's on the menu that's under $4. Oh, apparently a tea. Oh, you can get a tea. Ah, perfect. Perfect. I'm really, really hungry. Like, starving. Everything looks really, really good. I think Joel should let me have some. Mm. I think it sound like I'm starving you. You're the one who gambled the money away. Will you promise to never use the slot machine again? Because I am such a kind, loving husband, I will get you whatever you want. Okay? That's what I get. Thank you for letting me eat, babe. <laughs> that was a good burger. Got my fill of Montana beef. Now I'll leave all my beefs with Montana. <laughs> After many hours of driving, I finally had my wish. We had made it to the Canadian border. Canada needs to do better because they've got a lot of stalls that we could use, but for some reason, they've closed them all. What is in garage door number seven? Now the Canadians will be like, oh, well, you know way, eh? in garage number seven, that's why we keep our mountain horses, eh? Oh, you don't say, eh? My stereotyping Canadians. <laughs> the very first time I was ever pulled over by a cop, you know, he was wearing his red uniform because it was Remembrance Day. That's a true story. And I happen to not stop at a stop sign. He, like, waves me over very angrily. And I was like, I don't know where to go. You're not in the car and I, where do I pull over? And he's like, just stop. It was a terrible experience, actually. The meanest cop I, I've 
ever encountered, and he was wearing a red Mountie uniform. Okay, here we go. What about, what about Nunavut? It's a, it's a territory, it's not Canada. <laughs> Talk about exclusionary politics. I'm not the one to come up with these politics. The <laughs> politicians yeah. did it. She just said that Newfoundland wasn't part of Canada. I did not say Newfoundland was not. I said the territories. The territories are not. Oh, that's even three of them. That's even more than just the Nunavut. That's all three of them. Well, we're coming up uh, homeward bound. Made it back to Calgary. It's a good trip. It's off to Rosebud for me, I suppose. Fan life. Try it out by myself. This is like my first taste of really doing van life solo. Tune in next week <laughs> with Joel Bikes for a shower. As we make it to Rosebud, Alberta, I learned to do van life solo. My love. And we make it to the land of glittery snow.